Welcome. In the last session, we have seen some impacts of climate change that are ocean warming and melting of ice. Now, in this session, we are going to see uh, sea level rise. So, if you see what is a sea level rise, so uh, when the ocean got warmer and warmer, what will happen? It causes the thermal expansion. So, thermal expansion means the expanding a volume of water molecule. When a water molecule volume got expand, what will happen? The volume of ocean water will increase. Thereby, you can see sea level rise. So, this is the one reason when the ocean got warmer and uh, ocean warming happened. So, because of this ocean warming also, it causes melting of glacier or land ice. So, thereby you can see the uh, huge amount of the fresh water that is going to add in, uh, that is going to add as extra into the sea water, I mean, a sea water or uh, oceans. So, thereby you can see uh, eventually a sea level rise because some, uh, some of the extra water got added from the melting of glaciers and land ice, right? But not the sea ice because so, sea ice itself, ice within the ocean though. So, when the sea ice got melted, uh, it doesn't cause any much changes in the sea level rise or fall, right? Because it, sea ice is itself in the ocean only. It doesn't uh, add or uh, remove some water from the sea itself. So, if you see between 1901 and 2018, the old average sea level rose by almost 20 centimeters. So, and uh, moreover, um, uh, thermal expansion or uh, melting of glaciers or land ice not only causes sea level rise but also some of other uh, components which also cause the sea level rise that is uh, size and shape of the ocean basins right so if you see uh, to understand that you have to know the two concepts called like relative sea level and absolute sea level so if you see the what is the relative sea level relative sea level is nothing but the changes in height of the ocean whether it is rise or or fall relative to the land at a given location. For example, if you are at a uh, coastal location uh, nearby the land, uh, uh, which is near to the coast, and uh, because of uh, so-called uh, human activities, so the pressure which is, uh, which is falling on that land continuously been increasing from time to time. So what will happen? Eventually, the land will go down, right? So thereby, you can see uh, the nearby sea level, you, you feel that sea level got raised, right? So, because the, the land got down, down, so you feel that the sea level got rise. And similarly, in the reverse case, when the when the when the pressure on that land has been uh, decreasing from time to time, so your uh, land will go rise. Then automatically, you feel the sea level got down. So, means rise or fall of the sea level with respect to the land. If you say, then that kind of sea level rise or fall, you can say, you can call it like a relative sea level. But in contrast, absolute sea level is nothing but the uh, changes in the height of the ocean level above the center of the earth, irrespective of whether the nearby land is rising or falling. So if you see uh, from the above the center of the earth, if you see the height of the ocean, if it is changing either rising or falling, only if that change, if you uh, measure or if you see that kind of changes in the sea level, either rise or fall, that change. That kind of changes you can call it like an absolute sea level. In this case, you don't care about uh, whether the nearby land is rising or falling like that. Right? You have to only take care of the above the center of the earth, how much height the sea level, how much down on the sea level, like that. Okay. And if you see some of the statistics here, I just mentioned uh, how the global mean sea level is rising uh, from uh, time to time, say, for example, 1993 to uh, as of now. From 1993 to December 2002, the rise is the rise was like 2.1 millimeter for a year. Similarly, from 2003 to 2012, it was 2.9 millimeter for a year. Similarly, from 2013 to 2021, it is 4.4 millimeter for a year. If you compare from the first period, like uh, that is 1993 to December 2002, it was a 2.1. If you compare a uh, current uh, sea level rise, that is 4.4 millimeter for a year. If you compare from the first period to last period, so it's it become around double 2.1 and 4.4 millimeter years. You see, 2.1 is almost double to the 4.4 millimeter for a year. Like that, this much uh, like like uh, like this, uh, the rapidly sea level has been rising from time to time, right? So according to some IPCC report, uh, the worldwide sea level are expected to rise by 1.1 meters by 2100 if you continue these uh, emissions like this if you do not control or if you continue like this all these emissions are all so definitely there would be a rise of 
1 meters by 2100 right similarly by 2050 1 billion people some studies are saying that 1 billion people living in the low lying areas will be exposed to the coastal hazards because of this sea level rise and all and you can see because of some projections based on some projections of uh, this greenhouse gas emission rcp representative concentration pathways so various uh, pathways how the sea level has been rising that you can see so these are all some of the facts that uh, uh, that are saying like sea level has been rising continuously so what we have to do so when the sea level got rise so there will be a lot of devastating effects like uh, it, sea level rise inundates the low lying wetlands dry land and er erodes the shorelines contributes to the and gives the coastal flooding and increase the uh, flow of salt into the nearby histories or estuaries or groundwater that what we call like uh, groundwater aquifer that what we call like uh, salt water intrusion right and not only and this affects but also cause some kind of coastal damage to the coastal infrastructure from the floods and it also lost the tourism recreation transportation functions everything so these many impacts that we have because of the sea level rise that's why we have to uh, study uh, well in manner regarding how the sea level has been rising and what to how to control it and how to face this all consequence in a well adaptation manner and all right and uh, one more impact of this sea level rise is like five islands in the solomon islands have been lost due to the sea level rise and all and coastal erosion severe coastal erosion so this was the first scientific evidence of the effect of climate change on the coastline and people see and at this time another nine reefs island or severely eroded are likely to disappear in the coming years so if you see all the, uh, the if you see this image you can understand that how sea level sea level rise is going to affect uh, direct effects on some coastal hazards how you can see and right? climate climate uh, driven uh, uh, sea level rise and local sea level rise and also non climatic anthropogenic drivers of the uh, climate change that cause sea level rise and all you can see all in this figure you can see all kind of coastal hazards that we can see that we can get because of the sea level rise like submergence of land enhanced flooding erosion of land and beaches salinization i mean the salt water intrusion and loss of the loss and change in the marine and coastal ecosystem right so these many impacts that we have and uh, one more study is that saying uh, anthropogenic subsidence that i uh, uh, told you in the last slide like uh, going down of this land and all subsidence uh, and sea level rise uh, always threaten the many delta cities such as uh, New Orleans, Calcutta, Angon, Bangkok, Ho Chi, Min City, and Jakarta. These many uh, coastal cities are going to be severely affected because of this anthropogenic subsidence and uh, sea level rise, right? Uh, because of when these all uh, risk get because of this uh, risk caused by the sea level rise, that you have to, these all cities have to uh, face a lot of increasing. Uh, a threat from the floods or salt water intrusion and all right and coming to the ipcc sixth assessment report uh, it was named that the mumbai is the second largest of the uh, among 20 largest coastal cities to suffer major financial loss uh, due to this floods and sea level rise after uh, uh, gaonju in uh, uh, china and one more uh, few, many reports told that uh, uh, sea level threat to the coastal mega cities in India, especially Mumbai, Iran Point, in Sundarban, Chennai, Cochin, right? So, uh, what we have to do, like uh, to uh, control, uh, to respond to the sea level, what kind of um, uh, mitigation strategies that we have to follow uh, from both uh, in, in in all dimensions, right? So, we have already some of the, I mean, so, uh, some many international or national organizations have been set up some kind of. Uh, mitigation strategies to protect our response to sea level rise if you see this image uh, from uh, this illustration you can understand how we have to respond to the sea level like no response advance protection retreat accommodation and ecosystem based adaptation so this kind of this is on kind of uh, uh, the response to the sea level how to protect the uh, in which manner we have to protect our belongings or things near the coast when the sea level got rise I mean, uh, uh, while fighting against this sea level rise, right? And uh, ecosystem based adaptation is a one which includes the restoration of all salt marshes, mangroves, oyster beds, or coral reefs, and all. <clears throat> because uh, these all uh, coastal uh, ecosystems mitigate the marine flooding and coastal erosion. So we have to protect all these uh, 
we have to enhance these uh, ecosystem based adaptation methodologies while pro uh, protecting these all salt marshes mangroves and all right because this will reduce the risk for people living in the coastal areas as well right if you see this is a ecosystem based adaptation so impact the first will it reach the uh, this ecosystem based thereby we can somehow protect right so and uh, it, it is somehow uh, in this uh, no response advanced protection retreat also accommodation in this uh, uh, type of uh, response of uh, sea level rise also we use this ecosystem based adaptation and uh, some of the other practices that we that many countries followed the hard production like constructing dikes static static sea walls and all uh, to response to the sea level rise and all but uh, this uh, somehow however this has some uh, uh, another effect of the severe coastal erosion and uh, uh, damage to the marine habitats and all and thereby you can see some kind of uh, uh, soft adaptation practices as well to face the sea level rise and all and also to control the i mean to con i mean to manage the beach like a process of called like a, a beach nourishment and all so in this hard hard production you can also see the another impact by protecting from these uh, all uh, while responding to the sea level as you can also get some another impacts of that sea level i mean uh, shoreline er erosion or marine habitat uh, destruction and all but to overcome this issue with some kind of strategies came like adaptation methodologies came that call like soft adaptation also in this process beach will be nourished and uh, <clears throat> this is one i can say this is one of the environmentally friendly protection response for the coastal ecosystems and all so if you see the entire picture like a building hard production soft production implementing and designing of a new coastal models and accommodation to reduce the vulnerability so if you see the entire map in a such a uh, four corners like protection from the coastal hazards adapt to the coastal hazards integrated approach or infrastructure based approach if you see all these dimensions so that uh, you we can understand like how we have to respond to the sea level rise right okay